What's up, you beautiful seafoods? This is the cause with Midnight Lights starting my boss guides. I'm going to be doing all the boss guides, all five bosses, and today we're doing Fachar. And this is my no death, no sweat, no cheese, Sifu in-depth boss guide. That means that um, I'm going to get you to a place where you're not even going to die when going up against Fajar, and I'm going to make it a lot easier for you without cheating the game or finding little ways to... Um, yeah, sort of make a cheap knockout. This is really kind of skillfully beating Fajar, so let's get into it. This is how this boss guide and all my boss guides are going to run down for you. So it's going to start with a basic approach and tips, and then we're going to scout all of Fajar's moves, phase one and two. I'm going to talk about how you can maximize your damage, the best times to avoid and parry, and good counter combos to maximize that damage. And then I'm going to talk about how weapons help, where to get weapons before going into the fight, relevant shrine and skill upgrades. I'm going to go over a guide on how to spare Fajar, which can be tough. And then it will end with a full video where I don't die and beat Fajar. Let's go ahead and get started with our first section, which is just kind of a general approach and tips to beating Fajar. So the first one is don't be the aggressor. So what I mean by that is don't go after him. Don't start off don't start offensive combos. Don't do really long combos. The whole goal here is to pick your moments and capitalize on vulnerability windows. Now, vulnerability windows are what I call when you um, do a good avoid or a good perfect parry or deflect is what this game calls it. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Other tips are to scout. Um, scout boss moves. That's huge for every single one. You're just going to probably die quite a few times while you're learning. But the point is the first few times you go up against a boss, you should really just be learning their moves. And when you can find those times to avoid, at just the right time to open up a vulnerability window and then counter with a great combo. And so that's what you want to do. You want to find the best time to avoid to do a great combo move that maximizes damage. And typically those um, include knocking uh, Fajar or another boss to the ground and being able to hold circle for a ground and pound. And you'll find that when you scout and you get good at this, you're going to get kind of a rhythm where you know what combos you're looking for, you know when to avoid, and then when you know when to counter. And then you can kind of back away like that and just get ready for the next move, anticipate, and counter and ground and pound. And once you've gotten his timing, what you really want to do is use your focus early and often. So you've done all of your scouting, you're ready to really beat him, and you just want to use your focus as soon as that meter fills up, it can help you get the upper hand. The other thing is you want to block early in all combos, especially early on as you're learning um, their moves. But if you block the first two or three moves of a combo, um, just to see if you kind of recognize it, and if you do recognize it, then you should you know, avoid at the right time and then counter and punish. But if you don't recognize, you can just keep blocking, particularly against Fajar, who doesn't have combos that a lot of moves that really um, uh, damage your structure. And speaking of Fajar just not being great at some things, he's also not great with his guard or like defense. A lot of other bosses, if you don't perfect parry or have timing just right, you can't do it. There aren't any vulnerability windows unless you perfect parry or avoid. Whereas with Fajar, you'll see here like, I don't, I just block an entire combo, and when I'm done blocking, there's still a vulnerability window. So you're gonna see a combo right here where I'm just gonna hold up guard L1 the whole time, and then I can still land a punch and a kick after that. So that's pretty good. All right, let's get into scouting. This is all of Fajar's phase one attacks. We're gonna go through every single one of them. I really love doing this because it really helps you get the upper hand. So his number one most common, or he, he kind of has two very common attacks, um, both of which are just kind of two phases and you just avoid the second phase. So in this one, you can see the first phase is that sort of double kick and the second phase is a high kick. So the double kick, first thing, second thing, uh, second attack in the combo is the high kick. And that's all you're going to do. You're going to just duck that second one. You're going to guard the first attack, that little double kick, and then you're going to hold L1 and down on PlayStation 5 and duck the second one. And that will open up a vulnerability window. His second attack that he does a ton is the exact same thing. It's a two thing. It's a two attack combo, and the first one is the same little double kick, but the second one is like a harder, um, straightforward kick there. But it's the same thing you're gonna do. You're just gonna block that first double kick, and then avoid left or right of the straight kick. 
Those two combos are your bread and butter, y'all. That little uh, two-phase combos, the double kick and then the high kick or the straight forward kick, and you just block the first phase of the combo, that double kick, and then duck the high kick or left and right. You can really avoid L1 in a direction, any direction except up for that second phase kick. So that should set you up to do a lot of countering and punishing because he does those so often. Next, we're going to move into the long distance planter attacks he has. So if you are far away from Fajar, he'll use a planter to kind of uh, make up the distance and do an attack. And the first one is this big drop kick that you just want to hold L1 and left or right to avoid. If it lands, it will destroy all of your structure. And when after he lands, he also does a high kick. So you can kind of avoid the first one. And then it's also good to avoid the um, kick that comes after which you can see right there and I didn't avoid. Okay, next is the quick planner kick. So if you're a little distance away, he'll in a much quicker pace, jump off the planter. It's not uh, as much damage of the attack. It doesn't have that like bright yellow or red coming off of his foot. But um, the best thing to do I find for this is just to a block. You, it, he follows it up with a high kick like that, which you can avoid and it'll open up a vulnerability window. But if you're not used to it, you can just kind of hold block. He also will do that little flip kick if you get too close to him when he's at a planter, but he rarely does that. All right, the next one is the over the top planter kick. This is just, you don't have to be that far away from him, but if there's a planter between you and him, he's almost definitely going to do that kick. So just block it, just guard it, hold L1. And then you can see some of these planters actually have gaps at the bottom. And if there's a planter between you and him with a gap, he'll do this sliding, which you can get the timing right and avoid and open up a window. Better to just uh, hold L1 and guard or block it though. Now, when you're out of rhythm and maybe you overdo it and you do too many combo moves like I do in this, he will counter with an elbow right to your face and then he'll do a two kick combo. So the best thing to do to avoid this is just to do combos where you know when to stop and you can make a little distance and he doesn't counter with that elbow um, because it's just kind of a surprise. And if you're not used to it, um, it can be a little tough. So again, you can see me just doing too much with this combo. He parries it elbow to the face and then a low elbow and a kick and it's just not something you see a lot so it can be hard to anticipate now he gets pretty pissed off when he gets low on damage as to all of these bosses they get more aggressive and have longer or more different and different combos and one of them is this sweep combo where he'll start with a sweep which is so hard to anticipate. That's why it's always good to guard early in a combo to see if you recognize it, but it's just a sweep and a high kick and then a hard straightforward kick. So just block all of that. You survived phase one, and now it's time to learn all of his phase two moves. And there are longer combos, some tougher combos, but there's an opportunity to perfect parry in this, which is really helpful, especially as you try and work towards sparing him, which I have a whole section on that. So the combo you're focusing on is sort of a double kick as the first phase of the combo, two swipes of the blade, and then another sort of uh, high kick like that. So you have an opportunity, a pretty nice opportunity to perfect parry on the first uh, blade swipe. So the first phase, again, is that um, double kick, and then you can parry. Uh, there's a nice window to perfect parry um, on the first blade swipe. So that's it right there, just hitting L1 right as he's swinging that first blade swipe, which if you anticipate, like I said, it's pretty easy to get. Um, and that's so important because it'll weaken his structure quite a bit every time you do that. And that can really help as you get towards sparing him. And if you don't perfect parry him and just try and block this combo, just know that it is longer and tougher when he's lower on health. There's an extra hard long kick at the end like that. There's another uh, attack here that's just like the one from phase one. Uh, it's a two-phase combo. The first one, the little double kick and then a high kick. You can just avoid by ducking L1 and down on PlayStation 5. And it'll open up a vulnerability window. So again, it's just like the one in phase one. And sometimes it's a straightforward hard kick or a high kick like that. You can avoid left, right, or a duck on either of them, and you'll be fine. The next one, which happens a lot, is this sort of big swing um, with his knife. He, you'll see him kind of wind up, and then he has one, two swipes and a high kick. So you can block the first two swipes and then avoid or uh, left or right or duck that straightforward kick or high kick, um, and it'll open up a nice vulnerability window. And he does it so much, getting the timing of that one's pretty important. Big swipe.
second knife's cut, and then down, left, or right. Another one of his attacks is this sort of out of the bamboo attack that he does that can be tough to time. There isn't a great indicator. You just kind of want to avoid right before he hits you, if that makes sense. Too early or too late, it's not going to be good. Now, you can just block this. It, I think it stuns you a little, or it does a lot of damage to your... Um, structure but that being said you if you practice you'll get the timing right before you know it the other thing you can do though is dodge so you can just hit r2 and um run away or uh dodge away as well but the best thing is to avoid because it'll open up a vulnerability window next he has an ability to plant a tree and jump kick off of it it's just like a planter kick from the other one um again you'll sort of see him kick you just want to block that and then he'll do a high kick that you can avoid and open up a window to punish all right he also has some sweep action in the second phase which is so annoying because you don't see it coming so again all the reason to hold block anytime he starts a combo but if he lands it it's tough he'll throw in a, a third kick at the end he also does if he lands the sweep he'll just stomp you right in the face so Hold block early on all combos, and that will help a lot. Moving on, now we're at maximizing damage. So this is um, best ways and strategies to avoid and parry him. And then what are some combos I like to use to counter um, in, in ways that do the most damage? That's the goal, right? Open up these vulnerability windows and then find combos that do a lot of damage. All right, so the phase one combo that pretty much any time he uses, you are absolutely going to punish him for it is that phase two combo that starts with a little double kick and then a high kick or a straight kick. So let's watch it in slow-mo. So here it comes, phase one, double kick. Phase two, a uh, high kick, which you can duck or avoid left or right, L1, left, right, or down. Here it is again, duck. And then as soon as that's done, that time will slow down and you can punish him. So you're holding guard for the first phase or holding L1 and blocking and then avoiding down, left, or right um, to open up that window and then punish him a little double kick avoid down and punish moving on to those phase two combos so these are the ones we're going to exploit it starts with the one you can perfect parry which again starts with the double kick you know with Fajar, if you get a double kick to start it's very good news for you so here it is in slow-mo double kick is phase one of this combo that you're holding l1 to block And then as soon as he starts swiping that blade at you, you press guard or L1 and it'll perfect parry and open up a very handsome vulnerability window for you. Here it is again, little double kick, hold L1 as he swipes, boom, perfect parry vulnerability window. All right, the second combo where Fajar basically invites us to punish him is a very as the exact same from the phase one combo the one we love from phase one which is a two-phase combo a little double kick and then a high kick or a straight forward kick so here it comes little double kick is phase one of the combo and then a high kick we're going to block the first phase and duck or avoid left or right the other one which is again l1 and down or l1 and left and right so here it comes again in slow mo just so we can um really get it and remember that this is just going to be a two-phase combo when it happens. You're just guarding. I didn't guard very well there. Um, oops, that's not the combo. I think this is it. Little double kick, which I'm blocking. And then I duck that second one. Uh, vulnerability window and punish. Another combo you can pretty easily exploit, and he also uses a lot, is this big swinging knife swipe. Um, as the first phase of the combo, then the second phase is another knife swipe, and then he'll do a high kick or a straight forward kick, which you can avoid. So there's the first phase, that big swipe, a second short swipe, and then he'll do a high kick or a straight forward kick, which if you block those first two phases, this first big knife swipe, I avoided it there, but you can just block it and then duck or avoid left or right, and that'll open up the vulnerability window for that combo, which again, he uses a lot. Dang, okay, so we know all the combos. We know the best combos to uh, exploit uh, with perfect avoids and parries to then counter. So now let's talk about the combos that I think are the best to counter 
um, and to punish him when we do get those perfect avoids and parries. So the first tip I want to give here with this, though, is remember, don't string a lot of combos together because he'll punish you for it. You want to just get your combo in, ideally one that knocks him to the ground, ground and pound, and then reset and get ready um, for his next move that, again, you're going to avoid, parry, and punish. Before I get into those combos that I like to use and I really like, I will say that any combo will do. Any three or four taps of the uh, heavy or light triangle or throwing in a sweep or doing something with a weapon, like it will do. You just can't try and do too much. You can't do si a six button combo, but any three or four combo will do. So play around and have a little fun with it and don't worry too much about the perfect combo, but know that some of these uh, that I'm gonna do do, uh, do quite a bit of damage. Starting with this first one, which is square, triangle, 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 or light attack, heavy, heavy, heavy attack. And then that will knock him on his keister, and then you can hold circle for ground and pound. Um, so what I like about this one is you can you have it as a default. It's a combo you can use without any upgrades or any skills or anything. So you're going to get that perfect avoid and per or perfect parry. That vulnerability window is going to open. And then you can press square and basically spam triangle. Just triangle, triangle, triangle. Once you unlock a hook kick, you want to make sure you're pressing triangle quite quickly um, or it'll uh, trigger a different move. So let's watch it in real time. Again, here's the perfect avoid square triangle 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 boom on his butt ground and pound baby all right next is really my favorite combo because it's so quick and easy um, but you do need to unlock the hook kick in the um, skill the skill tree but basically uh, when that window opens it's square triangle quite quickly and then a brief pause triangle again because who doesn't want to just kick Fajar right in the face right like it's a very satisfying quick combo that knocks him on his butt and then you can ground a pound here it is in real time square triangle quickly and then triangle hook quick oh, I love it okay with weapon combos don't worry too much about it. I typically just try and do two or three like that and then hold triangle if you've unlocked that or just do a sweep down up triangle and that'll uh, knock him down. So again, just string two or three hits together of squares and triangles or light and heavies, and then try and do a sweep, either by holding triangle or down up triangle. And then he's down and ground and pound with my holding circle. All right, let's move on to weapon locations. This is really important for um, using weapons because they do more damage. So uh, with Fajar, the last room with enemies before you get to Fajar, two guys have um, bamboo sticks, I think they are. Let me know in the comments if you think there's something else. Um, but they're pretty good. They don't last a really long time. Um, but it is, you know, nice since it seems like Fajar can basically control bamboo to give him a taste of his own medicine here a little bit. I throw it away there, but you can grab it in that room and take it all the way with you to Fajar. And then you've got a weapon going in to the battle, which is great. Now, in phase two, if you sort of run around the different bamboo sort of big pods in the middle of the, of the level here, you'll see that there are, um, bamboo sticks there and you can use them so uh if you you can knock down those little bamboo structures and get bamboo or sometimes they're just lying around you just got to go find them i'm going to outline good upgrades and skill unlocks for each boss and the hope here is to give you a couple ideas about things you can do to help you but i'll say none of these are really the difference between dying a lot or living a lot it's everything we've done up to this point that will help you the most with that. See on these as well that there's one, two, or three asterisks, depending on how really important I think it is three, to beat that boss, three being the most important, one being less important, but still important than all the others I don't name. So focus regain is the shrine upgrade. I would focus on it has two asterisks. That's because you're gonna be doing a lot of avoiding and this will help fill that bar up faster. You wanna use it as soon as it's full. Next is weapon durability. Just making those weapons, which can help you uh, take down uh, Fajar faster, lasts longer. This makes the weapon proficiency makes the weapons do uh, more damage. So none of those have three asterisks, but all of them will help. The spin hook kick, I think, is really helpful as an unlocked skill because uh, when those vulnerability windows open from your perfect avoid or parry, this just knocks them on the ground fast for a ground and pound. Two asterisks for weapon mastery too. It's just nice to have weapons that you can use until they break completely. So if your weapons are doing more damage and lasting a bit longer, this one can help as well. 
Next is uh, charged back fist. So I'm pretty sure that unlocking this means that if you hold triangle uh, with a weapon, it will help you do a sweep. So unlocking this helps you do sweep with weapons. Let me know if I'm wrong about that in the comments. Next is slide kick. This is just important to have all of the time. If at any point you kick Fajar back, you can run at him and do a slide kick, which sweeps him, and then he's down on the ground and you can ground and pound. So those are my recommended shrine upgrades and skill tree unlocks. I wanted to include in these guys not just how to beat the boss, but how to spare them too. The only way to like truly beat the game, or maybe you would say to get the best ending, is to spare every single boss. And it takes some doing. It's harder. You have to live longer, but you also have to um, break their structure twice. So yeah, let's talk about the ways in which you um, can get to the place where you spare the bosses and therefore really beat the game. So in order to spare a boss, you have to break their structure twice without knocking them out. So that first bar has to fill up and break twice without the lower bar there uh, going all the way down. When you break their structure the first time, make sure not to press triangle and circle. Don't take them down. Just let them recover like I do there. And then the second time you take them down, you'll see this option at the bottom to spare them, which is left on the D-pad. Now, one strategy for helping with this, particularly with Fajar, is just using a lot of light attack combos, particularly with the bamboo. I found that that did not a lot of damage, but managed to um, help break his structure a little faster. So I just use square. I very rarely press triangle and sometimes that helped a lot. So light combos with square is the first strategy for helping to break Fajar's structure. There are two other ways to help work towards breaking the structure of really any boss. This is really the best strategy regardless of boss, and that's deflecting and parrying. And we're gonna look at the same video in super slow-mo three times to outline the difference between the two and how to do them. So parrying, I know it's a little confusing, is pressing L1 on attacks right when they land. And some attacks just aren't perfect parryable, which they call deflecting in this game but I deflected that knife swipe. So the first phase of this combo from Fajar is a little double kick, and I just press L1 when both of those happen, and then L1 right as that knife swipe lands, and that's a perfect parry or deflection. So these are parries. I just hit L1 right there, and then right there. And you can see the structure bar at the top light up when I do that, even though they're not perfect parries. And then that's a perfect parry or deflection when that, that knife swipe comes in. And um, all of that helps with structure. All you're doing is pressing L1 as soon as an attack comes in. But for some reason, some attacks, typically ones with wind up, are actually deflectable or perfect pairing. So this is just pressing L1 when an attack comes in. So L1 on that one, structure breaks down. L1 on that one, their structure breaks down a little more. And then L1 here, their structure takes a, a much bigger impact. Um, from a perfect parry or deflection. So I hope that makes sense and helps. Um, that's really the best way, regardless of boss, to help break their structure. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a full video of a phase two sequence with Bajar where I break his structure using some of these strategies. So you can see he got the jump on me there a little to begin with, whoops, sees. Uh, but here it goes, we're gonna start uh, by getting a weapon and we're going to do those light attacks. So these are all just square attacks. Um, and I'm not really doing a great job with rhythm here. I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be on the offensive to move quick because um, I really know his patterns well, um, but also to help impact structure. Because the other thing with structure, um, I'm not sure if it's with Fajar, but most bosses, if you run away or give them time, their structure will very slowly build back up where that bar will go down. So I'm just blocking there, and when I can, I'm pressing L1 to, to parry those attacks. But mostly in this video that you're watching, it's all just relying on um, light attacks to break his parry. You can see that's quite a bit of life left um, for a sequence of trying to break his structure. And I really like using a weapon. The other thing about using a weapon too is it really helps because you're doing all this blocking, so it's gonna actually prevent your structure from building too fast. But again, my main strategy here is really using light attacks as a form. There was a perfect parry, and that pretty much did the job. 
And you can see left shows up, and boom, he's spared. It's the human, it's the humane thing to do when you really think about it. Um, and then you get the sequence where clearly he's feeling a lot of guilt and shame. Oh, Fajar, you'll be all right, buddy. Earn this, Fajar. Earn this. We did it, y'all. We're at the end. This is the full video with no deaths. And with Fajar, I'm actually doing it with no shrine upgrades or unlocks either. Just to kind of show you um, that, it, you know, it can be done. That this isn't about a lot of upgrades or unlocks. It's about good scouting and good strategy. Apparently, I'm not even bringing a weapon. Um, so I basically started a new game with a new character. And uh, I'm going to show you a full video with Fajar. And go through a little bit of commentary, but mostly just make space for you to watch um, and enjoy. And kind of, I know it can be really helpful to kind of see a video uh, without cuts and slow mos, uh, but you can see right there, I'm starting off with the focus and um, the combo I like to use most, which is square, triangle, 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 or light, heavy, 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 um, press quite quickly. So, really relying on avoid. I know. I have the timing of those big planter attacks, um, and that again was square, triangle, triangle, triangle uh, for that attack that knocked him down, and then hold circle for the grounded pound. Used the sweep there to help too. Taking a few licks here, but mostly again relying on block or guard, holding L1 for the first two phase, the first phase of his um, most common attack. And then ducking or avoiding left or right for the second phase of that that very common attack. Oh, the sweep. The sweep in this game. And you saw I used my focus again just as soon as it filled up. It's one of the best things to do when you're really struggling to beat the bosses. Just don't forget about that focus bar. It can kind of recenter you and get you back into your rhythm. So here we are in phase two. Just skipping the cutscenes to make things go a little more quickly. Um, I'm pretty sure I spare him in this video, so I'm, I'm, you're going to see me very much stick to that um, spare strategy, which is using mostly light, using a weapon and using light attacks. So I don't do too much damage, but I am really impacting his structure as best I can. And then remember, throughout this, I'm trying to press L1 right when his attacks land uh, to do parrying, and then um, for his knife swipe attack I'm gonna try and perfect parry those but mostly I'm just trying to be really aggressive um, and break his structure this might be a time where you go get another weapon too um, that helps a lot with breaking structure but even without it I'm still mostly relying on light attack combos There was a perfect parry. Did a lot of structure damage, or you know, broke his structure a lot. So he's gonna have a quite a bit of life when I break his structure for the first time again to spare him. You just let him recover. Don't um, take him down or knock him out. Again, I'm gonna rely. You're gonna see me rely on the light attack strategy for sparing him, but he, I get very close to. Um, knock him out uh, before I break his structure the second time. Um, it would probably be better to be using a weapon right now um, or to try and get a couple more of those parries and perfect parries or deflections in. Coming down to the wire. But I remember now I do, I do spare him in this. And you'll probably see early on, too, that I, I entered uh, the boss battle as, at 21, too. Um, so it started at 21, ended at 21. I do lose a bit of life, but it's still a no-death video, which I hope you really like. I do spare him. Thanks for watching, y'all. Um, I know it's a bit of a epic in terms of the length of it. But my hope is that you're able to kind of bounce around, uh, go where you need to to help beat Fajar, because maybe you've done all of the scouting, um, and now at this point you're just trying to figure out that best combo or where to find a weapon. 
yeah, I really hope this video helped. That is it, y'all. Thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it, and keep the lookout for other boss guides. And just remember, as soon as I start making a single dime from my YouTube videos, 50% of what I make will go to a charity that we choose as a subscriber community. So all the more reason to spread the word, like, and subscribe.